You fit like Cinderella in her glass slipper? Yes! It's stiff! That's cool. Yeah. Oh my... You got it. Uh-huh. So, we were broken into last weekend. While everyone was gone, everyone was out of town, um, there was a break-in and five to seven thousand dollars worth of stuff is missing so far so Charles called me Sunday night last yesterday evening in a panic telling me that his snap-on tools were gone and the utility trailers gone so someone cut the cut the lock on the gate or they cut the what was it yeah they cut the lock they cut the cable yeah they cut the, the cable shut. on the gate then they cut the lock on the little shop yeah dude show them the little piece this is how you found it right here I found this on the ground Found this on the ground and the door was it's not exactly, it was hanging open it was hanging open everything like that. was hanging open so and i figured john couldn't find the key so he cut the lock to get in here and was using the utility trailer for yard work but i noticed there was a lot of tools missing and if he were to borrow that many he probably would have called me and that was just it's my whole top drawer it's like four feet wide is all gone and i that's how i made a living and I'm hurt. They got me. But. Yeah, they also took our utility trailer. We were planning on going to the track uh, Wednesday with the rail, but can't do that now because we don't have a trailer. Um, thankfully, everyone is okay. It could have been a lot worse. They didn't get into the big shop, but it is such a bummer, especially because Charles was hit the hardest in, in tools that are missing. So we came in here, and what's so weird is that we noticed that the plasma cutter to our Langmuir, um was just like stretched out like they tried to take it. They didn't take the laptop. There were like half a dozen bikes in here. All those were untouched. Charles's four-wheeler was right here, it was untouched. But he came in here and like everything expensive. Yeah, this was all red, all red, all red, snap-on stuff. All the ratchets are missing. They missed a few, like this one was sitting right here and they missed it. So they must've come in here with flashlights or something, but my spark plug ratchet. I mean, this, they missed this one. This one's not too cheap. I mean, and my initials are stamped in all my tools. So CH is is stamped in everything. So I, good luck selling it, but I mean, they probably will. Uh, and I've gone around to the local shops and asked them if they see anybody coming in trying to unload tools because they might be smart enough not to go, well, never mind. But yeah, I, I'm doing what I can to find the stuff. But uh, I mean, it. They took, they took all the expensive stuff. They knew what to go after because all this is Craftsman. And everything that's missing is all Snap-on, Matco, and Mac. And, and like there's stuff gone from these. Screw, all my screwdrivers except are missing. For except for one. That yep. was on the four-wheeler. Uh, my snap, all my pliers, my snap ring pliers, and then, um, yep. And then the Allen, Allen, all my Allen sockets and torque sockets are gone. So they left the Pittsburgh. They, knew, they left the Harbor Freight. <sighs> yep. This this really uh, really makes me it, it it kind of it makes me want to make sure that I raise my son right to where if he wants something bad enough he's gonna work hard to get it and not want to steal it from somebody because you know this is this is upsetting this is how I made a living and it's all gone. But luckily, I got a good boss. He's gonna keep me around. Don't worry. Well, we'll come back. It'll be fine. Yep. So we're still we're still checking around uh, to see what all is missing. But it looks like they loaded all of Charles's tools into his tool bags that were just sitting around, and they took the trailer and they left. We think something might have spooked him because like the four wheeler was sitting right here. It was, they had to literally walk around it. We yeah. don't know why they didn't take any machines. Yeah, I mean, we're this, thankful for it. But this drawer weird. would have hit the four wheeler opening it up all the way so yeah and the air box was off yeah that's it so i guess they just thought it was broken yeah so uh we made a police report uh there i gave them the uh, vin number to the trailer um so and between that and my home insurance um i mean the business it, the business can pay for a new trailer i'm not so worried about that the main thing is that charles <laughs> tools are missing and this is these were his personal tools this is how he made a living and we use the heck out of these tools uh, on a day-to-day -day basis for working on stuff with the channel good news is my granddad's tools are still here like his custom-made 
drill, drill bits and stuff. They're, they didn't take them because they didn't look of any value, but these are priceless to me. So, but it's all right. There's a broken 10 millimeter. That's what they get. So we're still trying to figure out what all the damages are. Um, last year, we did a collectible mini bike ornament around the holidays uh, to help raise money for Charles because right around then when his son was being born. Um, and we were going to do another one this year around the holidays, but uh, we're going to start him right now just so Charles can uh, help get his tools back or help pay for those tools again. So we had this idea, and that's collectible drag rail ornaments and they're on our website cars-cameras.com charles is keeping every dime of profit Thank from you. these uh cars-cameras.com uh, these are going to be 19.99 and they're handmade all by charles clear coated and then the painted one if you want to go that extra step to support charles and um, thank you that really means a lot yeah getting getting his tools back these are going to be a little bit extra and they're going to be painted just like our drag rail just as a way if you want you know to go that extra mile for them i'm sorry for getting emotional uh, I, it took me 10 years to pay for all that stuff and yes everything was paid for in there and they got me but this ought to help me out and thank you again yep i want to i really appreciate y'all yeah yeah, the, our saving grace is, is you guys, the audience right here. So just thank thank you all for just, you know, tuning in throughout the years and supporting us in these lows like this. Yeah. All so. Right. I, I'm speechless right now. I, 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 don't, I don't know what to say. For anybody that buys one of these, uh, you know, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate it. And, you know, you, you don't, I don't wish this on anybody. And, you know, I just think, Thank you that we have some good people out there that maybe, you know, hopefully going to be willing to help support us and help us out by buying some of these or whatever else we have on the website. Yep. I'm just, I'm, I'm still a little bit just, I, 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 it's hard to process everything right now. Cause every time I look at that, it's just sad, but yeah, we'll get past it. Don't worry. We'll, we got, we got some good content coming to y'all. So don't, don't worry. We're, we're still going to be. Still gonna be good to go. Just a speed bump, buddy. Yeah, no big deal. So I want to sell 250 of these uh, these ornaments just so Charles can really maximize what was gone. Honestly, 250 probably will barely cover everything that's missing, if that. Um, but just you know, the more you guys buy these, the more that will go into Charles's pocket for for replacing um, everything that was here. I mean, honestly, this idea was so Charles could have an end-of-the-year bonus for his family and his child. Yeah, we, so. we were literally talking about this idea last week. Just like, yeah, whenever we get them ordered, we'll start cranking them out and put them on the website. Yep. We didn't we didn't know we would have to, you know, move them up, move them up ahead of time, but this, this might be our saving grace. Yep. So, so these are all made-to-order, custom-made by Charles, so it that. might be a week in between when you and receive doing, it and when you order it. wheelie. But. Yeah, they do wheel these right out the gate. Yeah. So $19.99 plus shipping and then uh, $25.99 plus shipping if you want to go that extra mile for Charles. Thank you. So again, hopefully the trailer will turn up. I'm not too worried about it, um, but it's Charles' tools is, is the kicker here. Uh, anyway, enjoy this episode. Back working on the princess cart. Uh, Cars-cameras.com. Help support our guy here. Enjoy the episode. On today's episode of Cars and Cameras, we're back working on Cinderella's side-by-side. -side. Um, working on front suspension today. We have the front end of an old ATV we bought for 50 bucks, chopped it off, and now we're trying to figure out where to put it so that we have good wheel spacing and also room for our feet, which are gonna have to go in there somewhere after we widen it. Hopefully this doesn't all come crashing down. Got a mind of its own. Oh. So our four-wheeler hubs don't match the wheels. These are off the Bronco. We're using them for testing purposes. So we're gonna make a dual lug pattern Bronco wheel. And the way we did that was put some paint on the studs because we can't get the studs out. It works. <laughs> I mean, it might, it, it, it's gonna wobble just a maybe a little bit. No, that, that's why we have suspension, man. Yeah. It'll be fine. But that worked, and you know, look, we didn't have a paintbrush, so we used a shop rag. Shop rag. That is eyeballing on a budget. Right Absolutely. There. I was racking my brain yesterday on how we can accomplish this steering without bump steer, and then it hit me. Steering rack. 
So gopowersports.com has a steering rack and pinion kit, comes with U-joints, comes with the steering rack, comes with the tie rods, comes with the steering wheel. It has saved our tails so many times in the past uh, on our other builds. I'll link it in the description down below if you wanna check it out for yourself. But we're gonna get these drilled, get it mocked up, and we'll check back in. Oh God. I got an idea. A swivel seat to get in and out? That would eject our seat up, cuz. Oh, you're gonna put it on your butt and then get in? <laughs> yeah, we got our suspension mocked up. We're still not sure about track width, steering placement, control arm placement, and camber angle. All right, I'm in here. Just still trying to fit ourselves, keep it stubby, keep packaging tight and efficient. I will say, so far, not sure, you know, this is going a lot better than I thought it would. Really? Oh, oh Lord. I mean, we can chop the rest of this out and then yeah. just add that LED bar up a little bit higher. I mean, is this? You want a steering wheel? Yeah. There you go, bud. Now you got the full effect. And man, that makes steering a piece of cake. Yeah. If mean, we can even, get even away if with that. If we had to go up with it, we that part that we've got from Go Power Sports is yeah. We'll dang near make it anywhere. But. So, are you comfortable with where your feet are, legs? Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. As long as we can make a, a top shock tower. Yep. That goes across, and you can still get your feet in and out. Yeah, because it may it may have to hoop like a, and like this kind of. Yep. Uh, same kind of angle right here so we can kind of follow it and we can brace it with the there. roll cage there mm -hmm. Yeah, from dude. From I really like where this is going from here. This is so freaking cool man. <laughs> I, moved too fast. I moved too fast, but um are, are, Did we say are we doing XO cage uh, either XO or, or in, Indo in, in, one of the two Interior cage. not sure yet. It's kind of interior a, cage may make it a little harder to get in and out Yeah, like we'll have less room in here, but It'd be so funny to have two circles in here with a roll cage, but, so let's see. Yep, make sure oh, we can still steer it. In all honesty, we're about four to six inches wider track width than we wanted to be, but I think this is all we have. If we shorten the control arms more, there's gonna be even less room for your feet. There it is. And the shocks, uh, so I think this is what we have. Can't go straight up with the shots. No, can't go straight up and down. Stiff. Yep, got to lean them in. So uh, <laughs> this engine, this vehicle is getting two small block like Honda clones. Yes. Long term, we can always replace that whole rear section and put a bigger engine because I think this can. The way this is being set up, it's heavy, but it looks like it's going to be very durable, so it can handle absolutely 50 horsepower or something like that. Maybe the uh, the jump. The jump. Yeah. We have some ideas for our front end. Don't know if they're good or not yet. We're gonna find out. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing built and show you what's in our brains. Uh, we got the steering tacked in and I think we're gonna need to shorten our joint here. But look at that. Both wheels are moving at and the same time. Stairs. Oh, it's got my leg hair. It's all right. It's all right. Oh, the rubber boot pinched yeah. it? <laughs> oh boy. So we have a steering quickener we can put on here if we want so we don't have so many turns, but we're gonna see what it's like as is. I fit, like, I'm swimming in this thing. Right? We just gotta you, hope that Charles and Ike fit. You fit thing. like Cinderella in her glass slipper? Yes! <laughs> just the perfect yes. fit? <laughs> oh, this is so cool, man. And we're gonna have, we set up the, the shocks, or the control arms so that they have about five, five and a half inches of travel which should be more than our shocks can handle. We have these brand new Go Power Sport shocks. These, when they're standing straight up and down, have about two and a half to three inches, maybe more. I'm not sure I only tested it to that amount. And of course, once we lean them in, uh, they're gonna have more travel. And then also because they're in from the wheel, we're gonna have more travel at the wheel as well, if, if that makes any sense at all. So, if the shocks have three, we might be looking at four, maybe four and a half. Um, 
on the control arms. And the control arms aren't actually the limiter. The limiter uh, are these, um, the balls in our um, rack and pinion. So we gotta make sure, set up a bump stop if we have to, so that we don't destroy this rack and pinion. But so far, I am, I'm loving it, man. Yep. Next is shock towers, right? Yeah, now we gotta figure out shock towers. We wanna keep with the rounded theme. We need to make sure it's strong, but I would love to have a rounded shock tower. It gives our feet more room to get out. We can tie in with the roll hoop that's either gonna be on the outside or the inside of the body here. Uh, and then we can go forward, around, and down to make uh, protection for our feet as well. So I wanna see, Charles, you gotta sit in this thing. You just wanna see me do this with my boots, don't you? I really do, I really do. And we have our steering rack set up so that it's almost the same height as the control arm mount. It's more or less in the same pivot point as well, just to minimize bump steer. We're only looking at five inches of travel too, so bump steer should be minimal. Looks like you're making it work though, man. Oh yeah, I mean, cause we already talked about having maybe to trim this out and yep. then we'll just make a new one. But, uh, I'm ready, I'm ready to go from fifth to first again. <laughs> we found out that our, um, steering arm on the spindle is bent, but it was cheap. Yeah, I mean. ATV was cheap. It was well worth the $50. Yep. So we can chop it off, uh, build some new steering arms so that we can have tighter steering at Ackerman, all that stuff, but we can do that later on. Next up, we gotta figure out where the tops of our shocks are gonna mount. So we can figure out the angle that we want, which is gonna determine stiffness and the amount of travel we get at the wheel. So we're gonna try to rig something up that's not permanent, but that's more permanent than that. Something that will allow us to, you know, bounce up and down on it and uh, figure out our travel. Spring rate, it popped out. <laughs> Gabba. That, that ought to be enough. We ready for a test? Yeah, I think so. I mean, if, they, if it pops a tap, no big deal. Yeah. We just know it needs to be a little bit stronger. We've, we've made this so we can remove this. We, don't, we only built it just so we can see if our suspension works and we don't pop one of these, uh, what is it, the inner, the inner tie rod knuckles ball thing yeah I, I i guess a ball it's a ball joint basically but yeah we don't we don't want that to be the actual bump stop so let's see what happens i'm gonna keep my gloves on it's hot <gasps> it's stiff seems a little stiff <laughs> buddy holy toledo yeah Okay, the shock's on this loosest setting. Both of them, yep. Alright. Um, Is it even moving at all? I can't keep it from, I can't keep yeah, it from rolling. Yeah, that's, so, uh, uh, What I will do. Yeah, how do you want to try to test that? Um, well, I'm going to try and lock the wheels, which I don't think this is going to work. Chalk them up. Yeah. It is still gonna pivot. It's and still stuff. gonna pivot, I think. But uh, I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to hear. That seems like a bad idea, yeah, it's buddy. It's gonna be dangerous. Yep. I might need a hand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's moving. Just a little bit. I mean, these bolts are not, they're hand tight. Everything's hand tight, so it shouldn't be anything. It's not binding or anything. No, it's not like it's gonna bind. So we're at a point now where we can cut out the uh, mock-up upper 
suspension mount, we have these pieces tacked in and they look like really sharp. I love it. Yeah. It provides plenty of room to protect our feet. A little bit of a crumple zone up here as well. And we're also gonna uh, mount these tabs that I cut out with the Crossfire Pro right about here. And that's how we're gonna attach our shocks. So this temporary thing is ready to go. So I'm gonna cut it out. this oh absolutely yep now that it's tacked I just kind of had that as a wedge yeah it's really wedged you just said it there wow that cleaned that up huh that did Dang. let's get a look at it Whoop. kicking everything that's pretty cool. That really opened that up. That's cool. Yeah. Like, legitness. So we can tack that right there. Yeah. We'll make another one. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Not sure how square this thing is gonna be, to be honest with you. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, Ike is coming by this morning to check out the progress. He has no idea we're building this, so his reaction should be pretty good. I hope he likes it. Oh my, you got it. Uh-huh. You said no, and I said, okay, I'll do it anyway. Well, head on in, man. What color is it? You know what color it is. There's two colors. Oh, we didn't get the pink one. Thank God. <laughs> Oh my god. Dude. That's like three and a half days of a lot of work right there. I'm actually impressed. Thanks, man. It's uh it's eight inches wider than a dingo in the front, which is way bigger than I wanted. That's why I wanted to talk to you about kind of the plans and stuff is just kind of tacked in. But the upside is Charles fits like a glove in that thing and he's six foot. I'm gonna have to look for another job. <laughs> Y'all are doing pretty good. All this is just, and it, this is literally just to figure out suspension geometry. Did you guys see this? Uh, they probably did and are wondering yeah. if I'm gonna kidnap them and put them in my basement or something. It's a lot roomier than I thought it was gonna be. It is, we had to, we, <laughs> we spent about a whole day cutting Fitting, sitting in it, cutting, fitting, sitting in it. So, you're making a two-seater? No, 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 single. Okay. I'm like, why is the steering wheel so far over? Oh, oh, it's literally just it's sitting just... there. Oh, wow. You gonna try to use that steering wheel? Uh, impossible, but maybe we, <laughs> can, maybe we can make one out of metal like it. Yeah, heart, that would be good. I'm not really sure what happened here. Maybe it sat in like a <clears throat> position all weekend or something. Well, I think it relieved itself like you know it's plastic it bends yeah yeah probably happened so the plan is something like that of course like we were gonna bend some tube and stuff and get give you more foot room oh man i wish i brought the bender today oh the roller yeah that's why i wanted it cage T today uh not necessarily yeah but i wish i brought it today yeah y'all are gonna be working on this thing. this will go underneath here okay i can see that um and then yeah there's like actually like a ton of headroom in here i see that um are there doors there are doors oh right? yeah yeah yeah. we we were thinking about building door bars though or for part of for part of the cage for part of the cage uh-huh um but we have very very minimal bumps here which is really cool that's awesome um five to six inches of travel which is way more than i thought right and wanted um and there's lots of room for activities. The weird part is the bottom of your butt here is flat, flush with the bottom of, of the, yep, the frame. But your feet, as you can see, are elevated. Uh huh. But it's comfortable. It looks comfy. Yeah. Do you want to try to sit in it? I'm going to say no. Okay. Ike approved. 
He really liked it, man. He, yeah. he said it's heavier duty than we needed it to be, which is, we kind of knew going into it, um, but rather be too heavy duty than too light duty. Uh, we don't want to bend the frame going off of a bump or something. Uh, we're going to get a little bit more done on this front suspension before we end this episode. Uh, Charles bent up some tubes, and we're going to mount our permanent shock towers and begin to build some, some door bars as well that are going to run the length of the frame to the roll hoop. So uh, let's get tacking and uh, welding. You know, I just keep kicking everything. Yeah, that, that top has got to be removable, I we're, think. We're going, we'll come up with something. Moment of truth. Oh gosh, the seat is not. Having an unbolted seat really messes with you. It does. I'm not gonna have these boots on, don't worry. Shorter shoes? Yeah. That's good. As long as we can get this, um this out of the way will be good for our legs good yeah because i'm my, my shins are on it but we're going to create a dashboard about this high like the bottom of the tubing right here that connects with these bars right here and then we'll help hold the steering yep i think that looks pretty darn good though yeah, of course for, they're not i mean it's got you know barely tacked in and stuff for someone that's got five minutes worth of uh tubing bending experience i mean <laughs> and it shows so don't you know but uh but yeah this isn't too bad i you know i'm used to just putting go-karts and mini bikes together not building them not building the full thing so this is this is cool so that's it for this episode of cars and cameras we got our front end straightened out uh, figured out steering very very minimal bump steer about five inches of travel limited by the shocks which is right where we want to be it should be good and strong somewhat lightweight um next up we need to figure out our seating position and begin to build the dashboard but we're going to save that for next time one final thing i just wanted to say thank you to everyone who entered our cars and cameras custom wrap toolbox giveaway last month uh, it's been a, a big help for all the t-shirts and stickers uh, all the orders that were placed it'll certainly help recuperate our losses uh, with the recent theft uh, we pulled tyler's name from maryland uh, out of the hat on instagram live so tyler we're going to get this puppy shipped off to you uh, most likely tomorrow it was going to happen today but with all the theft stuff it's going to have to get pushed off for tomorrow but uh, we're going to do another giveaway sometime soon but uh, thank you again for everyone who entered. And Tyler, you can have a sweet one-off toolbox coming your way. Uh, these are also all of the uh, all the trophies Charles just put together for Mini Mayhem coming up. So Mini Mayhem is this weekend, October 21st, 22nd, and 23rd of 2022 at Busco Beach, North Carolina. Uh, you can find more information on our Facebook page. Every year, we put together uh, trophies out of like past parts from our projects. So here we have old spark plugs. We have uh, the old driver off of the 780 torque converter that we blew up on our drag wheel because it was making too much horsepower. We have an old uh, six and a half carburetor, uh, a lot of old chain. And these uh, trophies are gonna go out to different groups. So the person that traveled the farthest to be at the event, you have the person who had the most epic breakdown uh, and so on and so forth, just like we've done in the past. Um, Looking forward to seeing everybody this weekend at Mini Mayhem. Uh, you can RSVP and find more information again on our Facebook page at Cars and Cameras. And uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, be sure to uh, pick up some drag rail ornaments. Help support our guy Charles. Um, everything is going to be fine. Just kind of a bummer. We got a lot going on, especially with it being Mini Mayhem prep week and now this. So, but thank you all for your support. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time. The master. I'm just, I'm just the uh, grasshopper man. I'm not a master. The gr grasshopper eyeballer. <laughs>